still uh, plan to next week just kind of do a review. I've not really tried to spend a lot of time reviewing for many reasons. I sometimes feel like uh, we've been there, we've done that, so let's move on. Uh, and then there's also that of feeling like um, you can take more time and just reviewing than you can take in, in getting what God has fresh and new. So remember, we were looking at goals in this book that we were reading. I am a church member. And uh, we were trying to critically examine what it means to be a church member. I hope that you have a better idea. I know that I do. Um, there's been areas that I've had to repent. Um, areas that I've had to ask God to help me because I realized that I've fallen short and my life isn't in alignment with the Lord of God. So I'm grateful for this tool. Um, though it's small, it's mighty. And uh, we wanted to generate ideas that would help all church members become more engaged in the life of the church and the ministry. To make participation easier, we wanted to be able to facilitate discussion uh, on barriers that we can break down that would be more effective uh, that would cause us to be more effective church members. And so uh, I hope that that's what we've been doing. Uh, like I said, next week my goal is to kind of overview very quickly uh, and, and hear from you maybe what questions have meant something to you as you've done them, maybe what has stuck out to you in reading, and then we'll go over the five pledges. Uh, it's kind of part of chapter number six that we're on. I'm not going to do that aspect. I'm going to stop before going back over the pledges. And so, when we look at chapter number six, um, this final chapter, we talk about that we should treasure church membership as a gift. Now, let's just start out with, uh, he'll, he'll have illustrations, but let me just ask you, how many of you have something that has been given to you as a gift and you treasure it? You treasure it because it's valuable to you, but also that the giver is valuable to you. And so that makes you even treasure the gift even more. I have uh, uh, my grandmother made for each of her grandchildren a quilt uh, when I was early in my teenage years. I got the first one. Uh, I liked it. And so I was the recipient of it. And uh, I'm very cautious with that. Uh, some of my cousins have used theirs and more than then. And I used mine for a very long time. However, now I kind of have it in a treasure place. And sometimes I like to get it out and just kind of think. It's not even the quilt because it's not like it's the most beautiful blanket in our house. It's the value of the giver that gave it to me. And uh, I remember sitting, watching my grandmother take these pieces of material that um, was just left over, and she made them into uh, something called a log cabin uh, uh, pattern. And then she put all these log cabin patterns together. And uh, I watched her as she took those boards, and she literally quilted. And I watched her sew it. I mean, it wasn't like she did it in a day. I mean, I'm talking months. I go to her house and. I would watch her, so I value this because now my grandmother's not here. And so it is a personal gift. She gave me gifts, but this was a real gift that was of her uh, talent and certainly of her time. And so I value that uh, most of all because it's from her, as I said. And so when we look at church membership, it should be something that isn't flippant in our life. It should be something that we value because... The gift is from Jesus Christ. And so uh, uh, you know, we have to understand that the value of church membership is more than just being able to be planted in a church. And we'll talk more about this, but I'm trying to give us some opening ideas. Uh, but uh, it's something that we can't earn. It's, it's something that we can't even brag about because it's the gift of Jesus Christ to us. And so the gift is that, that, that we are saved 
and uh, I'll talk some things about salvation in a moment. It's that we're saved, and that is what causes us to be planted in the church, and we'll talk more about that in depth tonight. And so salvation, it's a gift. What's included with that? It's eternal life uh, with Jesus Christ, God the Father. It is the forgiveness of our sins, number two, um, uh, because uh, of Christ's death upon the cross. He loved us so much. He died on the cross. We hear it all the time, but we never allow it to become such a reality in our life. I should say, we often don't allow it to become a reality in our life that Christ has died for us. And uh, it, is, it is the adoption into a spiritual family. God places us into a family that's far greater than, than, and will far exceed even our own physical family. Uh, God's placed us there. And then he makes us a candidate uh, for receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And uh, then uh, uh, the fifth thing is it's a placement into a body of Christ. And so all these things are what salvation is. Amen. when we think about what salvation is, it's phenomenal. We couldn't do away with our sins. We couldn't make ourselves righteous. We couldn't do away with the guilt. And, and, but, but Christ has, and He promised us, is, uh, us eternity. And uh, 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 He makes us a candidate for, for the Holy Ghost, the adoption into the family. But He plants us in this body of believers. And I think the reason why many uh, Christians are unhappy is because they fail to be thankful for these five things. Uh, we, we don't really thank God for the gift of salvation. We know that we're saved, but we want so much more. That's, that's so yesterday. I, I want to be a receiver of something else. Do we realize the value of salvation? Do we realize the work that Jesus Christ did for us on Calvary? Do we realize that we have been given a spiritual family and uh, for all eternity we're going to be with uh, God the Father and God the Son, God the, 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 the Spirit in heaven. Uh, he places us into this body. We should be thankful. And if we're not thankful as believers, we should probably take evaluation and go back to these reasons why we should be thankful because this is what salvation has done. Thanksgiving shouldn't just be a fourth Thursday in the month of November, but it should be the adaption of our life as believers that we are thankful, gratitude for what we've received every day. Even when it's raining, we should feel like I can't wait to get to God's house to worship Him, to be part of the body of believers that He's placed me with. I love to go there and I love to serve. Uh, if services are canceled, I know that sometimes we may be tired, but there should be a feeling not just of, I'll get to rest, uh, but there should be a feeling of, man, I'm going to miss being with the body of believers. If it's not there, we should really evaluate our heart and life. So we should treasure church membership because it's more. It's our salvation. It's what we receive because of salvation placed into the body. So someone, if you would start reading chapter number 6, and kind of uh, a little bit lengthy, 67 all the way to the bottom of 69. Someone has given him an incredible gift. It is wrapped and ready to 
approach church membership similar to country club membership noted in chapter 1. We are joining the church to see what we can get out of it. The pastor is to feed us through his sermons. We have specified an acceptable range for the length of the sermon. The music is to fit our style exactly. Any deviations are not acceptable. The programs and ministries are for our benefit. We will determine what we like and don't like. We are members who expect perks, privileges, and service. So what happens when the country club church member is asked to contribute to the work of the church? What happens if such a member is asked to serve in the nursery for a few weeks? What happens if that member is asked to lead a fifth grade boys Bible study class? The response is predictable. One country club member may agree to the request out of obligation. She has a legalistic approach to serving. It's not what she wants to do. After all, country club membership is not about working. It's about being served. But since she's been asked, she begrudgingly accepts and begins the ministry with a bad attitude. She won't last long. Other country club members just get mad when they're asked. Some may respond that they did their time in earlier years. They make ministry sound like a prison sentence. Still, some refuse to offer a reason why they don't contribute. They are simply indigent that they were asked. And yet another group of country club members get angry toward the pastors. After all, that's what we pay them to do. Those pastors are just lazy, trying to get out of work. But there is a second option to church membership. It's the biblical option that sees membership as a gift something to be treasured. Membership means we have the opportunity to serve and give rather than the legalistic option to do so. Our entire attitude is different when we approach membership the biblical way. Amen. I really like this his, um, illustration here, Daniel. It seems pretty simple when uh, uh, Thomas Rayner uses the illustration of this boy having to go into his room and he has to get it cleaner than he ever got before and that it, it, it's a lot of work or he can have a gift that will bring him countless hours of joy. And we say, well, that's pretty simple. I know what I would choose to do. I, I'm not kidding. I know what I choose to do. How about you? And so, I mean, uh, so, so it's pretty simple. But he said, we as church members also have that simple task of doing it out of duty and out of, out of legalistic, this is my responsibility, this is what I've got to do, or we can do it because we have chosen, because we love Christ. And the value of our salvation is so great that God has planted me here, so I will do it. Think about this. How would it be if I, 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 if, if I came to you and I said, listen, we need someone to teach this Sunday school class. Can you go and get your clearances by the state? Uh, uh, go ahead and get them done. And uh, would you be willing to, to, to teach a Sunday school class? Well, the, the, the approach of, of, of the one who sees it not as a legalistic or a country club, like, I'm only going to do what I want to do, and I don't want to have to study. I don't want to be responsible for other people. I don't want to go get my clearance. I just don't want to do all that stuff. We have to look at it as an opportunity to serve. This isn't, I'm not doing it because I feel like I have to. I'm doing it because the pastor has asked me. He feels like this is an opportunity for me to be able to, to, to serve. Not to be served, but to be able to serve in the church where God has planted me. And because of my salvation, even though I know that I may have shortcomings, even though I know that there are areas I may have to work on, I am going to do it because God has saved me. And this great gift of salvation, it compels me and constrains me that I've got to go and share the gospel with everybody in the church and do the best in whatever position that I'm asked to be in. It's all about that approach. It really is. We can look at it like, like, like Johnny, that it's tough to clean the room and get spotless and done. Or we can say, you know what my choice and being part of the church is that with joy, I'm going to do this because it is a gift that will give me endless hours of joy. So I'm going to do it. It's 
all about us and our choice and our decision. Choosing with the worldly mind frame that I'm a consumer, it's a country club, or if we choose with the mind of Christ, He has saved me. He has placed me in a family. He has made me a candidate to receive the Holy Ghost. He has given me the promise of eternity with Him. And when we look at these things uh, that God has done for us, He's forgiven my sins because of the cross. We say, I've got to serve. And I'll do it gladly. When people serve because it's legalistic, and what he means by that is because they simply do it out of duty, out of service, not from the heart, not because they want to, not because they see it as a door of opportunity and privilege. They, they do it because it's what is asked of them. I agree with them. It'll be with a bad attitude, it'll have a poor effect, and it won't last long. So it's sometimes really us we need to work on so that we can be the best church member. That being this church member, I'm going to treasure this gift. The treasure is that I can be involved, not because it's on my own, but because God has given me the opportunity. And so when we read the biblical perspective of the church member, uh, page number 70 down to page number 71. I became a follower of Christ as a teenager. My high school football coach, Joe Henderson, showed me this verse in the Bible. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He explained to me that everyone is a sinner. No one deserves salvation. Everyone deserves death. But Coach Henderson showed me that Jesus took the punishment for me. He was my substitute on the cross. He became sin for me. He made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That evening, after my coach shared the gospel with me, I repented of my sins and placed my faith in Jesus Christ. Therefore, repent and turn back so that your sins may be wiped away, and the seasons of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. When we repent of sin and place our faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the gift of salvation. For you are saved by grace through faith. This is not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not from works, than, than, lest anyone should boast. Throughout the Bible, we see verse after verse that speaks of the gift of salvation, the gift of Christ's work for us, and the gift that means we cannot earn salvation through our own works. When we receive the gift of salvation, we become part of the body of Christ. Right before the Apostle Paul notes some of the gifts of the Spirit, he writes these words. Now you are the body of Christ and individual members of it, and God has placed these in the church. Do you see what it takes What it takes place? You receive a gift, the free gift of eternal salvation. That gift includes eternal salvation. It includes forgiveness of sins by Christ's death on the cross. It includes adoption by God the Father. It includes the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. And it includes becoming a part of the body of Christ. That's right. Membership is the body of Christ, the church. It's a gift from God. It's not a legalistic obligation. It's not country club perks. It's not a license for our entitlements. It is a gift, a gift from God, a gift that we should treasure with great joy and anticipation. Amen. It is a gift. Now, we live in a, a society where a lot of people feel like they're entitled. Uh, but entitlement isn't a part of, uh, of the kingdom of God. What we're entitled to is death and we're entitled to hell. But God gives us the gift of salvation. And so once again, it should be the gift that we treasure because it comes from the greatest giver. If, if there's someone who knows how to give good gifts, and every good gift is given by God, amen, we should treasure the gift, and we should value who it is that sent it to us. And so uh, I like how he, he, he reminds us 
And we know that. We know that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're aware that everyone in here, no one in here deserves a place in Miracle Revival Church. The pastor doesn't. No one else does. No, no social status, no financial status, nothing gives you the right to a status in church. It is Jesus Christ and the gift of God. Amen. He is the one, amen, who, 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 who did not know sin and uh, he became sin so that we could become righteous. Uh, righteousness. Uh, well, let me just read the verse. He, he made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteous of God in him. What a gift that God would choose us to make us pure and whole. It's a gift. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So this thing of salvation, it is a gift, and we should treasure the gift, and we should treasure the giver of the gift, God Almighty, Jesus Christ. And because we treasure it, He plants us in the church, and we say, God, I'm not here for the perks, but I'm here to serve as you have modeled before me servanthood. And so, the Word of God says, For you are saved by grace through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not from works, so that no one can boast. And in 1 Corinthians 12, verse number 27 and 28, the Bible says, Now you are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, uh, first apostles, and he goes on down through uh, 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 and, and names. But I want to focus mostly on verse number 27, that he has placed you in particular. We've already covered why we're here. We're here because God's standard of membership is because he's placed us. And we should be there to give, not with the idea of receiving. I love this next couple paragraphs. And so let's, let's look at it. Um, it. All that spoke to me, but when I read this, um, the universal church or the local church, it just became so real to me. I enjoyed it. So I'm going to read that if you want, down to almost the end of 72. Well, some will argue that the body of Christ refers to the universal the universal church means all believers everywhere, everywhere for all ages. They would be right. But the universal church and the local church are not mutually exclusive. To the contrary, the majority of the New Testament books are written about and to local churches. The book of Acts provides a historical narrative of the work of the Spirit's work of the churches in Jerusalem, in Antioch, in Cyprus, in Antioch, in Poseidon, in Ephelion, in Lystra, in uh, Pamphylia, in Macedonia, in Thyatira, in Thessalonica, in Berea, in Athens, in Corinth, in Caesarea, in Ephesus, in Troas, in Rome, in Malta, and others. Now look how many New Testament books were written to specific local churches. Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, the 2 Thessalonians. Four of Paul's books were written to individuals in specific church contexts. 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. Even the book of Revelation has the context of letters to local churches. The point is a lame and invalid excuse to say you will limit your involvement to the universal church. The Bible is clear that we are to be connected to a specific church in a in a specific context. Amen. How do you like that? Did you grasp all, everything that he was saying? Some folks will say, well, 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 when he talks about being brought in individually into the church, 
It's the universal church. When I use that, when he uses that terminology, it's meaning the saints of all the ages is what he's talking about. He's looking at the church world as, as a huge body. And, and so, uh, but, but, but he says this, he said, but, uh, uh, he said the, the universal church and the local church are not mutually exclusive. What does he mean? He starts saying that it's important for people to go to church and be in church and be involved in one church. Let me just, can I just say this for a moment? I know he doesn't talk about this, but let me just throw this in here. There are some folks that hop from church to church to church to church. They're out of the will of God. They're church hoppers. That's right where they are. Why do I say that? Is because God wants us to be involved in a local body. The reason why they hop from church to church to church is they are shopping for their preferences. There are some folks that I've known, there are some folks that, that have been through this church. And, 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 and they continue to go from church to church to church to church to church. The problem isn't all the churches, the problem is them. They're seeking out the wrong thing. They need to be looking for where God wants them, where truth is taught, number one, according to the Word of God, where they can go, where God has laid it upon their heart, and they are planted, and there they serve, instead of the ideology of serving and having their preferences. So let's stop there for a moment. Let me move on to another group of people. You all probably know these folks. We have this great age that we live in called technology. And some folks, they are part of a computer-based church. Let me tell you, I don't find that to line up with the Word of God. The value of having the local body, there is nothing that can duplicate it. We need the body. And once I got talking to some of these folks, their excuses for not being involved in a local body is lame and unbiblical. I'm just laying it out to them, okay? I'm not trying to offend anybody. Do I think that it's okay to watch things? Absolutely. But the value of being in church can never be disregarded to sit in front of a computer or a phone or an electronic device where you do not have the value of the body of believers around about you. I think I'm pretty biblical based on that. Because we need to be part of the church. And I love this. And maybe I thought about this. But it, the words of this jumped out to me as we look at the New Testament, which is the birth of the church. It's the Acts of the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts. It's the Acts of the New Testament church, the Acts of the Apostles. We find the church being birthed in Acts chapter number two. Study it out, research it. Then you find men like Paul, there are other epistle writers who wrote to churches to give them doctrine to help build the church. And so we find that throughout the book, uh, throughout the books of the New Testament. When we look, there were many, many different churches that were talked to individually. God uses individual churches. And then we find that uh, there were books that were written to specific churches, as he said. And then we find that there are four of Paul's books that were written not only to churches and specific churches, but to specific individuals within those churches. And so the value of us finding that God places us in church, and, and as I said, it is a mind shift. Some people really need to get a hold of this and understand that the church is not about our preferences. The church is about being where God wants you to be. 
It's about praying and getting behind leadership, praying for leadership. And I believe this too. I, I don't want you to come and criticize, but if I hear a need, amen, let's pray about it. Let's see what God has for us. Let's see if there needs to be a change in the way that we've done things. There may be a change in Sunday school classes because we have different ages. We look at what we have and we utilize it. Some things may be for a season. They may last a long season or a short season. We just have to follow what God has for the body. It's not about our preferences. It's about serving. I look where, where, where Paul, specific, and Titus, and Philemon, Philemon, how powerful as he speaks to this man that his life, his history. Timothy, his life, what was given to him, but where he's at, his youth. He speaks to him individually on how to function in the church. God wants <coughs> to be planted in a church. And God help us to be men and women that will serve in that church. You know, for me as a pastor, I still want to be a servant. I want to lead, but I want to be a servant leader. I want to see what God has to do as well. This is where God's placed us. And the gift of it is valuable. I'm here, you know why? You know why I'm here? Oh, I'm a pastor. Because first of all, God saved me. The value of where we are because of the value of salvation. Let's not take it for granted. So I want to read Understanding the Gift. So, how many of you in here, anybody not understand the value of treasure and a gift? I think we all do. We're all at the age where we value what someone gives. And then, if someone gives something to us, we value that family. Uh, 
it, it's, it's great. How many, of, how many of you would agree with Thomas Rainer when he says that when we are thankful for something, we have less energy to be negative? I would agree with him 100%. So when we're thankful for our salvation, things in church really doesn't matter. Like the idiosyncrasies and things that are not important. Um, in the scheme of things. Because we're just not there. We're not negative because we are more focused on just being thankful. And then he, he, he talks about, um, you know, uh, when we appreciate the gift, we want to respond to the giver. And so the, the natural outflow of our being thankful to God is joy that flows. So there's joy flowing in the church. There's an opportunity to give and serve because we're thankful for the gift more than anything. And so we joyously serve one another. Remember when the disciples, uh, as he said, they were arguing, who's going to be the greatest? And, 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 and he said, and whosoever will be the chief among you, let him be your servant. If you want to be the chief, you want to be the top dog, be the servant. I'm going to share this with you before. How many of you like Chick-fil-A? Any of you enjoy Chick-fil-A? Probably one of my favorite places to eat. And uh, I'll tell you hands down, their service is amazing. I mean, you say, uh, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. You know, I mean, they just, the, the way that they respond. And I think I might have told you this. But do you know that the CEO and every chief executive officer in Chick-fil-A has to spend one day a month on the front lines working? Doesn't matter if you're the president. Doesn't matter if you're some business executive. You take one day a month and you still go out and you serve. The whole idea of Chick-fil-A is built upon honoring God and finding joy and serving others. Now, if Chick-fil-A can provide it and be phenomenal, and you know what? They can protest them all they want. They're busting at the seams. They're booming. Because God is busting them. If, if, if I, and God bless Chick-fil-A. I'm not saying this as a slam to But they are a much lesser entity than a church. <laughs> And if they can find joy in serving and bring appeal to the world, how much more should we as believers find joy in serving and show the world the greatest among us chooses to serve? Because that's what Jesus did. That is church membership. It's not me picking and saying, man, I really like that, Sister Dot. I like sir. That brother Craig, oh, man. <laughs> I knew I could pick a brother Craig. <laughs> I'm just going to the two, right? <laughs> but it's about serving. Serving. As Christ served. That is... The gift. That is the gift. Church membership is a gift. Being part of a body of believers is a gift. And we should express our gratitude to serve just like Jesus served us. I do never look at this church. Maybe in my younger years I do, but in my life, I don't look at what we don't have. And there may be times that we evaluate what we need to work on. But I don't, I don't ever sit around and look at what we don't have. I'm thankful for what we do have. We're blessed to have a church where folks are used in the gifts of the Spirit for today. I'm glad to be in a church 
for folks who know what it's like to be genuinely saved. I'm glad to be in a church that God has called me to. And because of that, I find joy in serving Him. And that should be where we are when God places us to be able to with joy serve with those that He's placed us around. I love this chapter. And I feel like he just ends with the grand finale. I'm going to stop there and give you a chance to say anything. Um, then we'll, we're going to do a review next week. And uh, I want you to review the book. I want you to tell me some of the highlights. You don't have to be completely transparent. God's working on areas in your life. But if there are some areas that really spoke to you, I want you to highlight that and share it next week. It's going to be about group next week. Um, a little more so. Than it, than it has been in the past six. Any thoughts on tonight?